In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Welcome back to your program, Treasures. And we'll start today the epistle of St. John, the first one. St. John the Apostle, St. John the Theologian, St. John the Beloved. You all know that there are, there are two big St. Johns, St. John the Baptist and his disciple, St. John the Beloved, one of the 12 apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, we have to mention why this book was written uh, in the first century. Uh, simply at that time, after the martyrdom of most of the apostles and disciples, uh, in the late 90s of the first century, there were like a movement of what we call now Gnosticism. It's kind of a heresy. People believe that we can approach God just through knowledge. We need not any materialistic relationship with God. We need not the incarnate God. We need God as spirit, as a meaning, and we can approach him through this knowledge. So the Gospel of St. John and the epistles of St. John were written for this reason, to defend the Christian faith that we have no approach, no communication, no communion with, with God without our Lord Jesus Christ, the incarnate God. So the cornerstone of this letter um, is the incarnate Lord. And also, you know, it's very much related to the message of love. Because of the love of God, God came to our land. God became man. God saved us through his incarnation and redemption. So this love will be our mission in our life to end up the story with eternal life in eternal love. So the first epistle of St. John is mainly about these two items. The first is the incarnated God, and the second one is the message of love. Uh, let's start reading the first epistle of St. John. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. So St. John started his letter by focusing on the Lord Jesus Christ because that's the main key of the whole letter and this is that was related to the problem, which was from the beginning. So there is no beginning for the divine nature of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who had no beginning because he is always eternal, God's existence with no beginning. So the Logos, our Lord Jesus Christ, was always there with no beginning, which we have heard. So he came to us and we heard him, which we have seen with our eyes, the Lord was seen by our eyes because he became man, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. So the word of life is the word of God, the Logos, the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. We saw him, we heard him, we touched him, so he became a real man. The, the humanistic uh, nature of the Lord Jesus Christ is very essential in our belief. Because if the Logos came to save us without a human nature, he cannot save us. 
because he cannot die. His divine nature is not, you know, liable to death. But with the human nature, he can die for us. He can give his human nature to save humanity. He can complete his mission and redeem everyone by his death and resurrection. Death and resurrection cannot be applied on the divine nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. You all know that our Lord Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man in one person. He is God and he is man and his goddess, I mean his divine nature is true light of true light, true God of true God and also his human nature is a real nature like all of us, our physical human nature in the Lord Jesus Christ because without this he cannot save all of us. Again, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. He is proving by these simple words that Christ was a real man, because at that time, most of the generation who had seen our Lord Christ, you know, they went away, they passed away. So John was a witness was the one who enjoyed the relationship with the Lord Christ and he saw him, he heard him, he touched him, so he is witnessing the truth of God incarnate. The life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. So, the eternal life is in God. It's related to God. God is the only one who can live forever. But this eternal life, which is the Logos, related to the Word of God, was manifested. So, it was given through Christ the eternal life to human beings. And without the source of life, human beings can never live forever. So there is no real salvation without the communion with the Lord Jesus Christ because the eternal life is in him. That which we have seen and heard we declare to you. Again he is repeating the same uh, verbs of seen and heard, which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also many have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We cannot have a real fellowship with the Father God, who no one could see. Um, without the real relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ, we can see the Father. We can have a real relationship with our Father God. So we can never pray our prayer, our Father who art in heaven, without the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. So by this declaration, people will believe in Christ and through Christ they can pray to God the Father because they know the Holy Trinity, they believed in God. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. If you go to the Gospel of St. John, if you study the Gospel of St. John, you can see the same context, the same meanings, because St. John is the same writer for the Gospel and for the Epistles. So in his Gospel also St. John was focusing on the nature of our Lord Jesus Christ, fully God and fully man, and also the joyful uh, declaration of this truth. So he's saying, these things we write to you that your joy may be full. There is no spiritual joy without a sane, a clear 
uh, belief in Christ as God and also uh, living in a life Christ-like. This is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Some people at that time believed that there is a dark life and a, a light life and people can live in sometimes in a dark life and some other times in a good life. And you know, they mixed the two lives together. So it was clear in the early teaching of the church that um, living in a dark life, in a sinful life, meaning that you have no real relationship with God. God is light and no sin in God. And you cannot do sin and stay in a good relationship to God. This, you know, mixture of good and bad life is not a real good teaching of Christianity. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. So anyone who is walking in darkness and say that I'm a good man, I'm living with God, I'm following his commandments, I believe in Christ, that's a big lie because you cannot be a man of God and still doing the same sins as before, or walking in darkness and stay saying, I'm a good man. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Look to this, practicing the truth. The truth is not kind of a group of statements you believe in. The truth is the light of God. The truth is the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we should not only believe in the truth, we should practice the truth. We live the life of God through Jesus Christ. We live the truth. We practice the truth if we believe in him in a real um, good way. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. So walking in the light is the practicing uh, of the truth. So if you believe in Christ, you should follow him. You should walk the same steps. You should be Christ-like. You should love everyone because Christ is love. God is love. So if you cannot love people, you are a big liar. You cannot be a real Christian guy. If we walk in the light uh, as he in, is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Why he mentioned now the blood of Christ? Because we all are sinners and Although we love God and we are trying to be good like him and to follow him, still we are doing sin. And sometimes we fail to do the right thing. But still, we are covered nowadays in the New Testament with his blood. His blood can um, cover all the sins. So we are not worried much about the negatives in our life, the sins in our life, because Christ paid the debt. Christ covered us with his blood. So we will walk again and again and try again and again to walk in the light following. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. That's a very good declaration because some Christian people believe that as far as we believed in Christ, now we are a new creature, a new people, so we do no sin anymore. Actually, this, this is not truth. This is not true because we still do sin, but not as before. We hate to do sin, but we still have this weak nature in our life. So we are struggling against the bad life, the old life, and we are catching up with the new life given by the Holy Spirit through the Lord Jesus Christ. But if anyone just saying 
that I have no sin, actually he deceived himself. So it's better always to confess, to admit that I'm a sinner, I do sin, but I believe in Christ, my Redeemer, my Savior. He covers my sin and I will try again to please Him. I will walk the good way in light. I will, you know, continue my struggle until I reach the likeness of my Lord Jesus Christ. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So the sacrament of confession is uh, mentioned here. You know, some people may believe that just confessing means admitting, but it's not only to admit that you are a sinner, but to confess. To confess meaning that you will pray confessing before God that you had done wrong. You are a sinner and you also go to the church to get the blessing of your father of confession and the absolution given from Christ to the father of confession and to be cleaned out uh, from all this sin. So uh, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. He is faithful because he gave a promise that anyone comes to him asking for his forgiveness and asking for the new life. He will be forgiven. He will be given the new life. But he is also just. So the blood of his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, pay the debt, cover all sin. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. So if you say that you are not a sinner, you do not sin, you are lying and also you make God as a liar because God said that everyone is, you know, is doing sin. Nobody is pure, no righteous man on earth. Everyone needs salvation, needs the righteousness of God, the blood of Christ. So if anyone say that I do not any more repentance, I need not to repent again. I need not any forgiveness. I was forgiven once. That's not true. That's not honesty. Be faithful and don't consider God as a liar if you just say, I don't need any forgiveness anymore. So that's simply the first chapter of the first ep epistle of St. John. And you can see that he focused on the person of Christ as God and man and real God and real man and he witnessed that he shared his life he had a real physical relation he saw him he heard him he touched him and through the relationship with the Lord Christ we can have a real fellowship with God the Father and that's the truth uh, revealed to everyone and through this truth, we are confessing our sin, we are admitting that we are sinners, and we are trying to live a good new life in love to everyone. I wish when you are following me, just to read the chapter again, and also if you have time, please go and read the Gospel of St. John because reading the Gospel and then reading the Epistle of St. John will uh, help you to understand the meanings and you know the seed, the Word of God will stay in your heart and help you to see more and more the light of God. Glory to God. Amen.